let's start recording about uh, temple so what is the temple area so it is the area situated onto the uh, sides of the skull from where to where uh, from the superficial temporal line to the zygomatic uh, arch it is the uh, area situated onto the sides of the skull what is the accent from the superficial temporal line the lower side it is up to the zygomatic arch what is known as the temple the name given because uh, mostly the graying of the hair the losing of the hair most occurs on the side so with the passage of time from the time uh, that word is derived from temple because the first uh, grain of uh, hair occurs uh, over this region that's why it is known as the temple in the passage of the time now what are the layers what are the layers of this region so let's uh, draw the diagram also remember just like uh, if it is a skull onto the sides i am just drawing the schematic diagram uh, it's there, there and uh, pinna and if i am uh, drawing uh, the diagram of the temple the first layer here yeah. the first layer here also it is a uh, skin the second layer which is a uh, connective uh, tissue these two layers the character is uh, similar as the scalp the characteristic is uh, similar as the scalp means skin is a uh, thick and hairy the connective tissue which connects the skin with the third layer that is the epigranial aponeurosis so third layer is also here also it is a aponeurotic layer so you can say apo neurosis right but uh, here the origin of the muscle is a uh, different the origin of a uh, muscle here it is a uh, different in the scalp it was uh, occiput from occip occipital occip frontalis and uh, here it is uh, auricular is uh, anterior and the auricular is uh, superior so here the aponeurotic uh, aponeurosis uh, gives the origin of the auricular is uh, anterior muscle and auricularis superior muscle that's thing and these three layers are also tightly connected in this region also now the difference is into the fourth layer yeah so the fourth layer i can just say that the three layers are the same but the fourth layer the fourth layer which is known as the temporal fascia and this temporal fascia actually divides into the two part on the lower side so the third layer sorry the fourth layer which is known as the temporal fascia which is the different than the scalp this temporal fascia superiorly it is attached with the superficial temporal line and lower side up to the zygomatic arch but the different thing is it is divided into two slips near zygomatic arch what are the two slips the one we will label it as a superficial slip and the other one which we will label as the deep slip so one will be the superficial and the other will be the deep slip and between these uh, superficial and the deep slip uh, three things we have to remember which is uh, running uh, which is uh, present in this uh, space what are the name of uh, these three things one which is a uh, fact then uh, the second one which is a uh, branch from the which is the branch from the superficial temporal artery and one nerve which is known as the 
zygo latico temporal now so temporal fascia near the zygomatic arch divided into the two parts into the space in the space that it contains three things what are the things of fact then a uh, branch of the superficial temporal artery and the zygomatic temporal now and uh, the deep part the deep uh, division of the temporal fascia also uh, give origin of one muscle which muscle that is known as the temporalis muscle right and uh, now we have to remember the fifth layer and the name of the fifth layer is uh, temporalis muscle very important muscle it is also the muscle of the mastication so this temporal is a muscle actually it is a fan shaped muscle and it is a originating from the inner aspect we can say it is originating from the inner aspect of a temporal fascia yeah after originating from there on the sides we can say it's a fan shaped muscle after originating fibers goes down and they are inserted where that fibers are inserted onto the part of the mandible which part of the mandible they are inserted that is known as the coronoid process of a mandible right now the fifth layer sorry the sixth layer which is known also known as the perineum and it is also same as the skull which is uh, tightly adherent at the sutures and uh, uh, loosely attached at the bony part now uh, what is the clinical point that we have to remember into this uh, uh, temple region so, first we just revise the six layers first skin then the connective tissue third epicondyl aponeurosis difference here it gives origin of the auricularis anterior and auricularis superior the fourth layer which is uh, known as the temporal fascia at the lower part two divisions superficial and the deep and in between the space uh, contains three things right superficial uh, branch of the superficial temporal artery and the zygomatic temporal uh, nerve and the fifth which is known as the temporalis muscle which is the fan shaped muscle its fiber goes down inserted onto the coronal process of the mandible and the sixth layer which is known as the perineum and why uh, it is important because in ENT yeah for uh, one surgery uh, we use the temporal fascia to make the tympanic uh, membrane for making the tympanic uh, membrane we use the temporal fascia and the name of that surgery it is known as the tympanoplasty